Hello, and welcome to part two of section 4.1. We are still looking at antiderivatives and indefinite integration today. Today, however, though, we're going to look specifically at initial conditions and particular solutions. And I believe we talked about this a little bit in part one, but when we take the integral of a function and it's an indefinite integral, we know that there are many solutions. That's why we include the plus C. So any two of those solutions are going to be similar to um, each other, but they're going to only be different by a vertical translation of one another. So if you look at this picture here, and this is um, the integral of 3x squared minus 1, you'll see that these are all of the different possibilities. So if I have c as a negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and so on, you'll see it's all the same shape, it's just we're shifting that graph either up or down depending on what our value of c is. Now when we deal um, kind of like with story problems or we're given enough information, sometimes we can actually determine a particular solution to that um, indefinite integral. And in order to do that, we just need to know one piece of information, and that piece of information is called the initial condition. So when we look at example 6, it says to find the solution of f prime of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x squared. We're only looking at values of x that are greater than 0, and it says when f of 1 equals 0. Well, this f of 1 equals 0, this here is my initial condition. So this then is going to help me solve for that value of c. So what I have to do is I have to go and find f of x, and I'm going to find that by taking the integral of 1 divided by x squared is really x to the negative second dx, and when I go and I integrate that, I end up with a negative x to the negative first plus c. So if I want to rewrite this then, I really have a negative 1 divided by x plus c. So this is my general solution right here. Sorry about that little mark. Um, and if I want to go and find a very specific solution, I'm going to use the initial condition that was given. So I know that f of 1 equals 0 is an initial condition. This 1 is really an x value. This 0 is really a y value. Therefore, I can plug in what I know up into this equation. So I know that 0, or f of x, is equal to a negative 1 divided by 1 plus c. So in other words, 0 equals negative 1 plus c, or c is equal to 1. So based upon that information then, I can go back and solve a very specific solution and say that f of x is equal to a negative 1 divided by x plus 1 when x is greater than 0. And this here then would be my specific solution um, using the initial condition that was given. Example 7 says to find the solution to g prime of x equals 6x squared when g of 0 equals negative 1. So I'm going to do the, or go through the same process, and I'm going to actually be looking for g of x, and this is going to be found by taking the integral of 6x squared dx. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday. If you don't want to integrate with that 6 in there, you really can rewrite that as 6 times the integral of x squared dx. So when we go to solve this then, I have 6 times the integral of x squared is really going to be x cubed divided by 3 plus c. So if I distribute that 6, I end up with 6x cubed divided by 3. And remember, if you put the 6 with the c, it's kind of an arbitrary number, so you don't have to worry about that. We end up with plus c. 6x cubed divided by 3 is really equal to 2x cubed plus c. So this is our arbitrary equation for g of x. Now if I want to use my initial condition that was given, I'm going to plug in a 0 for x and a negative 1 for y. So I end up with negative 1 equals 0 
plus c, or c equals a negative 1, which then tells me that g of x is really equal to 2x cubed minus 1. And that is my final solution. And now it's time for our story problem. It says a ball is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 64 feet per second from an initial height of 80 feet. We want to find the position function given the height s as a function of time. So using this piece of information, we know that when t is equal to 0, s of 0 is equal to 80 feet, and s prime of 0, because that's a derivative of velocity, is really equal to 64 feet per second. And you are expected to know that the displacement function, or s of t, is equal to a negative 16t squared plus your v sub 0 t, which in this case is going to be 64 t, plus your initial height, which was 80. And let me just write that down for those of you that forgot that equation. So this equation right here is really where I got this from. v sub 0 is your 64, s sub 0 is your 80. So using that equation, we can go ahead and find the second derivative. And for right now, we're going to omit part B here. I actually have that on the next slide, so I'm sorry about that. So to find our second derivative of um, t, or s of t, we actually have to find the first derivative, which is, which is going to be a negative 32t. And then the 64 is just going to become plus 64. So to take the second derivative, I end up with a negative 32, and this would be feet per second squared. And remember, this is really my acceleration due to gravity. So now, because I know my second derivative is equal to a negative 32t plus c, if I integrate that, I'm going to get the integral of s double prime of t dt is really going to equal the integral of a negative 32 dt. Well, the integral of the second derivative is actually the first derivative. So s prime of t is going to equal a negative 32t plus c. And here, I can use my initial condition up here of s prime of 0 equals 64, and I can plug in the fact that 64 is equal to a negative 32 times 0 plus c, and I get that c is equal to 64. So this tells me then that s prime of t is equal to a negative 32t plus 64. And from here, I can look at my displacement equation. And my displacement equation is going to be the integral of s prime of t. So s of t is equal to the integral of s prime of t dt, which is equal to the integral of a negative 32t plus 64 dt. And when I integrate that, s of t then is equal to a negative 16t squared plus 64t plus c. Well again, I can use that initial condition that I was given up here that says s of 0 equals 80, and I'm going to plug that in. So s of 0 is 80, so I have 80 equals a negative 16 
times 0 squared plus 64 times 0 plus C. This ends up telling me that C is equal to 80. So when I go to find my displacement equation, my displacement equation says S of T is equal to a negative 16 T squared plus 64 T plus 80. Now, this right here just so happens to coincide with the equation that we predicted up top. This formula right here was given to you as an Algebra 1 and an Algebra 2 and a pre-calc student. Now that you're in calculus, you can go ahead and derive that equation all on your own using antiderivatives. So on that note, I'm going to congratulate you because you now have an understanding behind this and how they come up with that equation. So you have now just become a better person because you have that true understanding. And it's okay, you don't have to thank me. Now the last part of this problem says, when does the ball hit the ground? So in order to find out when the ball hits the ground, we know that our height has to equal zero. So in other words, S of t equals zero. So if I say zero equals a negative 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 80, all I have to do now is solve. So I can actually go ahead and factor out a negative 16 from everything, and I'm left with t squared minus 4t minus 5, and this is all set equal to 0. So I can actually factor this here, and I get a negative 16 times a quantity of t minus 5 times t plus 1, and this is still equal to 0. By the zero product property, I know that when I take these factors, set them equal to zero, I can solve for t. So t then is equal to 5 or a negative 1. Well, because I want to know when the ball is hitting the ground, it makes no sense whatsoever to have a negative time. So this tells me that the ball will hit the ground after, or when the time equals 5 seconds. So on that note, I'm going to wish you all a good night, and I will see you in class tomorrow.